So. So there's this billboard, Life is Great, and the, uh, and the cigarette packet there. And uh, I just thought that's uh, a positive way of showing things. And of course, what's on the film, I think, is probably the enjoyable things, things we were doing. When did we go? 1971. So I was probably nine. Uh, nine and a half. Nine. <laughs> um, I think we drove down to Southampton and then got on this big boat and um, took two weeks to sail down to Cape Town with the whole family and the dog. remember the address of the house, yeah, 17 Petunia Street, Florida Park. Obviously, um, well, the whole area was, was a white-only area, and, yeah, it was quite a nice house. We played in the pool loads, and we used to have races on our inflatables. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was an interesting place to live and, and see the country, not Johannesburg. That was awful. The atmosphere out there was not good. I likened it to the Wild West, where you had people with guns and people without guns and lawlessness, because the Africana and the English immigrant did not get on too well. So there was this bad feeling between Africana and English, and there was a seriously worrying feeling between the black chap and the white chap. The Africanas seemed to treat the black chaps, certainly worse than the whites. That was sad. Yeah, the parks were all whites only. It was just what, what happened at the time. Um, and we didn't really, we thought it was strange and we questioned it, but we didn't, you're just sort of more accepting at that age. You know, you've got other things in your life, haven't you? Playing out and going swimming. They didn't see the political situation. I don't think they realised the dangers if a white girl went out at night unaccompanied, she was in danger of being attacked and raped. She, she couldn't do it. She had to be accompanied, she had to be in a car. We didn't dwell on apartheid. We knew it was about, we knew that there was segregation. We didn't understand why, all the politics, but you know, sort of the day-to-day -day lives of some of the people that we knew, we were sort of empathetic with their lives but didn't stress about it too much, really, because there was always something else to be getting on with, wasn't there, you know, another party to go to, another barbecue. We used to go to um, to the mines on the outskirts of Johannesburg. There were quite a lot of mines there. The men worked at the mines. Their families all lived back in the tribal areas. Then on Sunday, they had to do this mine dance for most of the morning, and that was their like the only day off in the week. I think yeah, I'm sure you had to pay to go in as well. So obviously it was a little a little earner for the mine owners. I mean they were quite good because they were all dressed up tribally and they were doing them. But it was very you know thinking back now it was very orchestrated and a bit, a bit unkind really. I think what the children enjoyed was our trips away, um, because Johannesburg was a pretty awful place to live. We would. Uh, go away at long weekends, bank holidays and holiday times and go and see the wider country, the whole of the southern continent. And I think, I think they enjoyed those trips. They were cooped up in the back of a car, four of them on the one seat, for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. But they knew better than to complain. Sometimes we, he would drive a thousand miles in a day, in a night, with four of us in the back of the car, a tent on the top, tent poles on the top, bag of oranges, water container. We were very self-sufficient. 
It was an experience, it was. We all had our little jobs putting the tent up. It was very regimented, as you can imagine. Being the eldest girl, I was um, Nana's little handmaid, and so I helped Nana with the cooking, serving, and uh, yeah, washing up. How did Nana find it over there? Uh, Nana found it really tough, really tough. I mean, she had four kids and a dog, so pretty young kids. In a country that really people in the UK didn't know that much about, and obviously she left all her family and friends behind. She, she did get involved, but I think she was just homesick. She, she missed her friends from home, she missed her parents and her brother, um, and just Britain, really. It was a lot of fun in camping. If you like it, you enjoy it. And we saw amazing places. It was very visually stimulating, the different cultures of the people, the way people lived, the scenery was so different from one end of the country to the other, from, from the east coast of the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, totally different. Very, very good. Thinking back now, we're extremely fortunate to see what we did, and I am very thankful of those very cramped camping holidays. You know, it opened our eyes to, to a lot of other aspects of life, and I think it probably did help in our development as well, for sort of the, the people we've become. Um, it was such a, such a mind-changing experience. You remember much of it like yesterday, but also those negatives, you remember those, but that's the way it was. That, that was good and as bad. Um, Britain, when you leave your homeland, you're leaving, you're leaving the womb where you're comfortable. It's got disadvantages, but you're comfortable in it because it's, it's, you're used to it. But when you go to a new, new country, you see all the negatives and they prey on your mind more than the positives. And they perhaps become more important. Thank you.